vicious. Loose. Since before Cyril Gann transitioned into MMA, he was already a decorated Muay Thai fighter. Accumulating a 13-0 Thai boxing record, Bon Gammon was always known for his insane striking ability. Nicknamed Good Boy, Gan was the most violent inside the Muay Thai ring, though many wondered if his electrifying striking would do well within the octagon. Only at 3 0, his UFC debut showed that he had the MMA skills to mix it all up. Gan silenced the crowd as he showed that taking the game to the ground would not give anyone an advantage either. Oh, look at that. I mean, that rolled over and gone, ended up on top. But look at this. Look for a head and arm choke on the jujitsu guy. But now, the thing is, the problem for Gan is that. Oh, oh look at that. The There's the top. Gan's impressive footwork and consistent stance switching is always a hard matchup for any opponent. Digging that jab to the body, he can really tear you apart. It's almost like he throws an off-speed high kick. Like he's Within MMA stance, most UFC strikers left themselves vulnerable to body and leg kicks from an authentic Muay Thai athlete like Gan. Having a lot of success out of the southpaw stance. He's way, Gan is way too comfortable. Right? And despite having a very low guard, it was still hard to hit him. In addition to his masterful technique, his timing is also impeccable, carefully calculating each and every strike. When smelling blood, Bon Gammon doesn't play with his food. That probably explains why he holds five wins by knockout and three by submission. His calculated nature doesn't shy him away from finding the finish. Gan knew that a title shot would be close in his future, though passing through Jarzinho Rosenstrike would be no easy feat. His striking in MMA was far more patient than his Muay Thai striking, though the precision and power remained intact. Always measured, Gan understood when to pick the correct shots. Shows how good uh, Cyril Gan is on strike. It's not easy. Not, it gets in and out of range. I see a little more aggression. Gan was inching closer to the belt. Gan would solidify his title shot with a win over perennial contender Alexander Volkov. While Volkov was a taller opponent, Cyril portrayed poise and control with his strikes. He able to dictate the range of the fight with his jab. All this combined with his middleweight-esque movement made Gan a tough puzzle to solve. Gan's moment of glory was close, though he would have to pass by Derek Lewis for the interim belt. In the middle of the third round, Bon Gammon wrapped it up with calculated uppercuts and strikes. And, and that leg is compromised. Whilst avoiding Derek Lewis's big haymakers. There it is. Oh, big this is where his brilliant Muay Thai came into the Octagon's equation. Covers up. Watch Lewis go here. He eventually got it done via ground and pound. Gan was now the interim champ and the first ever UFC champion from France. His next opponent, however, was quite a familiar one. His former sparring partner in Paris, France Naganu, was now the heavyweight champ and a clash for the ages was set for a cool January night in the fight capital at UFC 270. Both men had massive respect towards each other and we had a largely anticipated bout ahead of us. The first round was dedicated towards a feeling out process, as both fighters landed soft strikes. I'm very surprised Gan hasn't thrown part of his game anyways. One, 
Francis literally just walks you down. Cyril looked very comfortable, even landing this spinning wheel kick clean on the champ. Oh, wheel kick. Gan looked like the superior fighter on the feet, and it seemed as if the fight was going his way. Though the unexpected happened in round three, as Francis took Gan down and wrestled with him, reminiscing a prime Khabib in 2018. Naganu exposed a hole in Gan's game and therefore retained his belt. Does that count for anything? The body kick from Naganu allows him, if he's gonna try to take him forward, but Cyril tries to face him, now Francis to take him backwards, yep. Wow, beautiful. It was now time for Gan to go back to the lab and build himself another title shot. The Frenchman knew it was too early for him to give up. The always entertaining Tai Tuavasa was the next one on the line for the Frenchman. Gan looked loose on his feet and made reads that his liver kick would be a successful one. Looks like he's carved out a stone and then, you know, Tai obviously a little bit loose. They don't follow the sport. When you look at these two, it's very... Despite that, Tuavasa wasn't one to play with as he knocked Gan down with a flush right. Be a little reckless and make this down. The fight quickly turned into an all-out brawl with Gan picking apart Tuavasa with body shots and nasty liver kicks. Tuavasa's range. Oh, hurt. He's hurt the body. Wow. Oh, what a combination from Gan. Oh, dead. Both men are hurt. Oh, his body's hurt. The body shots are killing him. I don't think he can take you anymore. The Australian. Gan is peppering him with the jab. And despite being hurt early on in the round, Gan was able to show poise and patience to win the round. It's incredible. Oh. At one point, Cyril had done his reads and was choosing each and every violent shot he would want to place on Tai Tuavasa. Oh, yeah. oh. It just takes the. Oh. Gan delivered a final blow with this amazing sequence. Mark Goddard had seen enough. The Frenchman sent a message that he was still here and he would be ready for another opportunity at gold. Gan now faces what many consider the greatest of all time in mixed martial arts, former light heavyweight world champion John Jones. Gan will greet him into the almighty heavyweight division. This will be a tough challenge for Cyril, but one that if successful, will edge his name into the record books as the only man to have beaten John Bones Jones.